Hi, this is Wesley Chun, engineer here at Google. Today we're going to show you how to do something you've never been able to do before, format spreadsheet cells using Google Sheets API. Yeah, that's right. You couldn't do this in older API releases, and I've got a stack of Stack Overflow questions to prove it. So I hope you're excited as I am. To keep it short and sweet, I won't be discussing reading or writing a sheet, nor import-export. Those are covered in other episodes, one of which is where we show you how to migrate toy orders from a SQL database to a Google Sheet. We're going to reuse the same sheet created in that video, so check it out and run that script first. Check out the sheet that it's created. Doesn't it look totally bland? Well, today you're going to learn how to format those cells to make it more presentable. What do you think? Way better, right? To get the sheet to look like this, you have to send formatting commands to the API. For this sample, there are four. One, freeze the top row. Two, bold the top row. Three, format the prices in column E as financial values. And then lastly, adding a fixed values and cell validation for the order status in column F. What do those commands look like? Well, each request is a JSON structure represented here in this pseudocode as a Python dictionary. You can group as many of them as desired into an array like a Python list and send them together in one API call to spreadsheets.batchUpdate. Let's look at each of the four requests for our sheet now, but more generically in JavaScript. Frozen rows are a sheet property, so we need a command that updates sheet properties. After much research, we decided to name it update sheet properties. More specifically, set the frozen row count attribute of a sheet's grid properties to freeze the top n rows of the sheet. For us, n is 1. Before moving on, let's talk about sheet ranges because we need them for the remaining requests. First, a range is made up of a sheet ID and indexes. Next, when you create a brand new spreadsheet, the default sheet that's created for you has an ID of 0. Like most programming languages, counting starts at 0, not 1. So here you can see column names and row numbers, and mentally convert them to zero-based indexes. Also, ranges are exclusive of all end indexes. That means that they go up to but do not include the end index value. Lastly, know that you can leave out an index when you want to take the default. We'll discuss each situation as they come up. Time for a quiz. See the blue highlighted range in the sheet? Now, this range JSON object you see here, well, what should we fill in for each value? We'll start with the sheet ID. Assuming this is the default sheet, that's right, the ID is zero. In fact, if you know you're accessing this default sheet, you can leave out the sheet ID completely. The range starts at column D, which is at index zero, one, two, three. It ends up column E, which is four. But since the end index is excluded, we need to bump that up to five. Similarly, the starting row is 3, but that's at index 2. Finally, it ends at row 4, which is at 3. But we need to bump that up to 4. Good job! Now you know how to set up ranges. To see more examples and learn more about grid ranges, see the documentation. Now we can talk about the other three requests, starting with bolding that frozen row. The verb is repeat cell, meaning apply this format to all cells in a given range which is the first row and the first sheet. Now that you know all about ranges, you can see that these are the correct values representing the first row. However, we recommend you drop both column indexes. Hard coding columns is a bad idea, because if you add more columns, they're not going to be bolded. By leaving them out, the entire row will be bolded regardless of the number of columns. If you're accessing the first default sheet, meaning its ID is 0, you can leave off the sheet ID too. Finally, all start indices default to 0. So we can also drop start row index. The only one you really need is end row index. Next is what you want changed in the cells. In our case, it's the text format, specifically its bold property, toggling it to true. Finally, fields specifies which fields should be affected. Think of it like a bit mask or a field mask. Here, we don't want to change any existing formatting other than the cell's bold setting. For example, if you only had user entered format without the dot text format dot bold as your fields element, you're going to lose things like the cell's background color, the vertical alignment, and other properties. Check our docs to see other formatting examples, as well as to find out more about field masks. Now let's format the toy unit costs in column E. For range, I left off the sheet ID because we know it's zero. We're formatting rows two through six, meaning start and end indexes of one and six. But we should drop the end row index for the same reason as described before, to bold all of the first row. 
Instead of omitting the end column index, we leave off the end row index so as to format the rest of the column, even if new rows are added. Column E indexes are 4 and 5, and both are needed. Now we're changing the user entered format also, but this time it's number format instead of text format, giving the US dollar currency format with a dollar sign, comma separated thousands, and two decimal places. The fields mask is what you expect, changing only the cell's number format. Getting easier? All right, more on date, time, and number formats can be found in the documentation. The last formatting request is set data validation, adding fixed fields for toy order status and cell validation of those values. Range is as before, but now for column F. As before, we want to format the entire column, so leave off the end row index. The rule is that the cell should or must contain one of a list of valid values pending shipped or delivered. Should means weak enforcement, while must is strict enforcement. That means that if a user enters something other than these, they'll get an alert like this. Enforcement is controlled by the strict variable, which, if you omit, defaults to false, which we did here and in the Python script. Use the input message attribute if you want a custom message when users go to the cell. It's not important to me, so I'm leaving it out using the system default. If you choose strict enforcement with input message set to what we have here and uncommented, users will get this message. If you take the default like I did, users will get this dialog text instead. The show custom UI flag causes a pull-down list of options to be displayed. Now, it's a pretty poor experience without it because users are not going to know what available choices are. So I recommend you always use it too. OK, that's it. Now you know how to format cells using the Google Sheets API. For a change, we won't be going to the computer today since constructing the JSON payload makes up most of our short 70-line Python script. If you take a look at the code deep dive, you can confirm that other than the boilerplate and a single call to the API, all the heavy lifting is done in constructing these four requests, which consist of a Python list of dictionaries. Check out the first link to see more on JSON payloads, specifically common operations that you'll do with the API. The second link takes you to the Sheets API concepts, quick starts, and other guides to help you get started. The last link takes you directly to the reference docs. Once you get this sample working and want another challenge, use the API to create a column G with a total cost header in cell G1. Set the cell G2 with a formula to calculate the cost based on the toy's order and cost in columns D and E. And then use the autofill command to copy that formula down column G. Hint, you only need the range attribute. More on this challenge in the code review post mentioned earlier. We hope you learned a lot about formatting with the Sheets API in this video and have gotten a taste of how much more powerful this API is compared to previous versions. Now you can build those awesome apps that you weren't able to do in the past. This is Wesley Chan from Google reminding you to subscribe to our channel and leave any comments below. Have fun with the Sheets API, and we'll see you next time.